Bola Podcast Syndicate Production. Each of us runs a different pace in life. As a millennial or someone coming of age into adulthood, this is a lot of things to process. And a lot of things that you want can't happen now because a lot of things are... In love, friendships, and our own self-worth. As we embark on these journeys, we hold the hope to learn a little more each day. Why can't I have whatever they have? And oftentimes I find myself... Um, Comparing my progress, comparing what I have with other people, even like in the slightest way, it seems like it's a... As we survive and strive to be stronger. You are really sure and aware of your being as a person and your truth, your core, your everything. Anything that you put out in the table won't be used against you. So I'd like to welcome you all to love, growth, and freedom. The different kinds of love that we could see in this world and on the idea of how love is crazy and how love has different meanings for all of us. A podcast that believes in love, inspires growth, and advocates freedom. Let me be your friend, your guide, as we all ride the crazy adventure called life. Powered by Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Hey lovies, it's another season and another episode of Love, Growth, and Freedom, a podcast that believes in love and acknowledges growth and encourages freedom. So welcome back to another season of Love, Growth, and Freedom, Freedom, Freedom. So it's been a while, it's been a hot minute, it's been a whole month or so of not creating content. I took a break from the season and I really just had to rejuvenate and re-inspire myself with life. So I had to let life take over as I move forward with it. Because doing these things, having this podcast, doing my day job, doing everything, it has cost a lot of um, fuel to be exonerated or used or whatever. And I really needed to live a life again i needed to find a little mundane and normalcy to everything but we're back again and i am so excited for you guys for these episodes that i prepared and this season for you it's all about gratitude we're going to talk about gratitude this season we're going to talk about how we could practice it what were the things that we could be thankful for and what are the things that we should see the light in and I'm not trying to push this idea of toxic positivism, but it's more of the idea that sometimes I know life can get messy, life can get a little ugh, but being grateful for the things that we have is really such a work in progress, it's really such a thing, and it does its magic whenever you feel like you can't do anything in your life. So before we continue, what is gratitude. Gratitude is the quality of being thankful, the readiness to show appreciation for and return kindness. So gratitude in a lot of ways has affected our lives or will affect our lives whenever we give it and when we are, whenever we receive it. Um, if you, these things that you do, these little acts of gratitude, when you say thank you to someone who's opened the door, when you say thank you to someone who's given you this glass of water without even asking. And when you also give that away, it makes a lot of people feel happy. If you can see this imaginary love tank or a tank that has this gratefulness tank, um, people would actually feel that happiness, that that feeling of success when they kind of like help someone. It, it really boosts self-esteem and morale. And on this episode, we are going to talk about the seven scientifically proven benefits of gratitude. And gratitude in a way for me is a lifesaver. So again, I told you, I want to be personal with you. I had some troubles with the past few months and I was doing the season three of this podcast. I was feeling depleted and I really needed to take a break, which hence gave this way of like a long break from the podcast and creating episodes for the podcast. And along those times of having that break, a lot of things happened to me. And a lot of things got me so grateful for everything that I've had. And I really want to celebrate it. So I want to thank you for listening to this podcast. I want to appreciate all of you 
lovies who has given me this support, this love, and this platform to actually spread this love and light to all of you. And okay, so we just got nominated for the Philippine Podcast Directory Academy Awards. Yes, their own awards. And PPD has been very supportive of the journey of all Filipino podcasters that they come along with and come in contact with. And, and they've shown me so much love. So we were nominated. This podcast, you and I, guys, all of you, has been nominated for an award as the Male Podcaster of the Year and also Vidcast of the Year. So... It's a good win for us, guys. Just being nominated is a humbling privilege. And I don't know, it just feels so good to be there. So uh, the moment that I was feeling really like lost in the creation processes of making this podcast, those came along. Those little validations and wins that we get there get, came to me. And in that aspect, I was grateful for the opportunity to actually have that and be nominated. So I had to celebrate it. I, I just told everyone it made me feel good. Being thankful for the universe, thankful for God, thankful for all of the things that's been happening to me right now, even though if I don't see it behind the scenes, things are falling into place. And I'm very grateful for that. And that the power of that gratefulness got me to write down a whole season of things to talk about for gratefulness. Because gratefulness for me brought me to a lot of the things to where I am today, where I am now, my mindset, my my life, and my emotional growth was also due to that practice of gratitude. Okay. And then during those breaks too, I also won some roller skates. I am just so amazed and grateful because... I didn't have to spend a dime or a penny. I just had to join this competition, get my friends and people to vote for me. And I was surprised by the numerous amount of support that I got from the people I know because they know that I love roller skating. And I, I got it. I won that roller skate. So extremely grateful for all those. And I could not express it so much. I had to express it multiple times to them that, hey, thank you for your vote. It mattered so much. And these... I'm sure that these gratefulness or gratitude or the act of gratefulness towards them also has brought them some kindness and it it costs and it can cause a ripple effect of gratitude towards people around them too. So it is a ripple thing. It's a one pebble makes a long, long ripple effect of waves of gratefulness around you and you just spread positivity and goodness and I think that's what's missing in this world sometimes because we move at a very, very fast pace and we rarely see what's going on in our lives. We rarely think the little things that's happening in our lives. For example, if someone opened the door for you, you would say thank you in that moment, but would you remember at the end of the day that somebody opened the door for you? And, and when you think about it, when was the last time somebody opened the door for you? And, and to show that kind of appreciation for something that small that you think you may think that small, it can make it seem like, okay, you have a lot of things to be grateful for. So sometimes bad things happen to us and sometimes good things happen to us. But when bad things happen to us, this can force us to look at the half full than half empty part of the cup. If you've had of the, one of those moments that that was a pinnacle or a pivotal, not pivotal, pivotal moment of your life that could lead you to be grateful for the things you have, that came to me when I, again, I've been talking about this, but that came to me when I was heartbroken or when I was going through that lost boy phase of my life, when my career wasn't in place, when my relationship fell apart with that significant someone, with that significant other ex, and when things are getting crazy and hectic in my personal life because everybody's also just trying to move forward and trying to live. So I was so grateful for the friends and my family who supported me that way. I've never sat down with myself and said thank you to all those people. I did. I may not have said it in person, but some of them I do. The, the, every time I get the chance to say thank you to them, I do. But with my family, I don't really get to. But I thank them. I, it, it's it's just a thing. We're not that 
communicative, but I know in my head, in my heart, I am grateful for them. And I write it down in my journal. I write it down somewhere. I write about the things that I feel grateful for. And some of the things that I practice when it comes to gratitude is just I think them. I write them down in the notebook or I try to express it in some certain ways. But I am very grateful for those people. And I never felt grateful because I had someone then. Well, like when I was with my ex, I was never that grateful for them. I was taking them for granted because I had someone that I was really uh, somebody like getting all that gratitude for. And when that vanished, I was able to just go through this really fast life like that doesn't feel like a life anymore I just felt like a robot that's going on and on and on with my life and then boom I had to sit down with myself I had to learn I had to pick myself up and I had enough time to show excuse me to show gratitude towards a lot of people so I became kinder I became happier expressing this kind of kindness and appreciation towards the people. So whenever somebody gets me my coffee in Tim Hortons, whenever somebody buys me something, I, I always say thank you. And with a smile, with a really, really big smile, and you would also see it in their faces that when you give that kind of gratitude and kindness towards them, they also have that thing. So in these moments in life that would actually get you to see the worst in everything, you're going to feel upset, you're going to feel down in the dumps and dirty and all that. These moments are going to force you to actually look at what you have rather than what you don't have anymore because it's lost. What, 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 what use is it to cry over spilled milk, right? What use is it to actually mourn forever about the things that you've lost? Yeah, you can mourn, you can grieve, you can just keep it, feel it, let it flow, feel the sadness, feel everything. It's part of it. But there are certain things that you, you can always be thankful for. Um, and these little things are what we call the mundane, the normal things that we experience in our lives that we don't really see happen. So my advice there is to actually just open your eyes to the little things that come along when you do your life. And how can you do this? How, For me, again, I'm a very very big advocate of journaling because I remember if I don't journal for at least a day or two, I forget. I tend to forget the little things that happen in that day. For example, um, I might forget that I worked out, I ate this yummy or one of my favorite chocolates and I, I forgot to thank the universe for that. You know, it, it's really just something that you can look back into and say, okay, um, if you do it at the end of the day, you'll realize that you have a, you had a full day. You had a day that was filled with joy and happiness for you. It may seem normal or it may have seemed like nothing has happened, nothing real, nothing fun has happened. But when you look at it, when you write it down, okay, there were things that you were supposed to be thankful for. There were things that you are actually happy about that happened. And you'd also see those little wins that you could have or you should celebrate. If, for example, if you are trying to develop a habit of working out and then you worked out, show appreciation for that. Be grateful for the time that you had to work out, the energy, the motivation to do so. Because this would actually lead you to do it more and more and more. It's not a magic trick. It's not a voodoo. It's not anything. But gratitude just brings in so much positive energy. And I know the struggle here is that it doesn't, it doesn't come along so easy being grateful for the things that you have. It doesn't come along easy, especially when you're down, especially when you don't see it, especially when you don't feel like it. But there are ways that we could work over on that to practice gratitude. Um, and then that's on the coming new episodes. Um, those things that make you feel wrecked has taught you the lessons to look at the good side of the situation. So some of the, the pivotal moments that you have in life that would force you to be grateful about the things that you have rather than the things you've lost these have taught you lessons and sometimes these lessons are also something that you could be thankful for um what if you lost a friend because you had a big mouth <laughs> and you had to tell you know you couldn't keep your seek the secrets to yourself and you broke that friendship you broke that trust you would feel upset you would feel devastated that you wrecked that friendship but one thing, the good thing that it brought you is that you knew more about yourself. So you could be thankful for the lesson of 
trying to keep your mouth shut. And there's so many things. These situations may be dark and scary and gloomy. But the lessons that you take out of it makes you a better person. So what do we do? We say thank you to those lessons. We say thank you that it didn't end up as worse as it should be. And, you know, so pick it up. And if you lost this friend and you want to get them back, you stay sorry. You do it. You do everything in your power to get them. And if it doesn't happen, you have to walk away. You have to walk. But you know for the fact that you did everything you could. <clears throat> so I'm going to get back to why I started practicing gratitude. There were there are so many things. Um, a lot of things has happened in my life that, you know, um, just caused a lot of change, a ripple effect of change. I was outed in 2018. My ex cheated on me and everything happened in 2018. So if 2018 didn't happen, if I wasn't outed in 2018, I wouldn't have had the freedom to become who I am today. My dad wouldn't have to have that journey of seeing me as a person more than just my gender and accepting me. So he, that situation brought us to actually grow in a sense where my dad had to accept me for the things that I do, for who I am, what I provide, like me wearing crop tops. Those are the things I, I really do test him once in a while about my own sexuality and how he deals with it. And he's been doing really, 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 really great. But so those are the things that I am thankful for. Because if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have this kind of freedom. I wouldn't have this podcast. I wouldn't have this enormous love for myself and the people around me. I'd always be stuck in that closet of hiding and not being happy about myself and trying to overcompensate and achieve because of my sexuality. So, yeah. And also, um, with my ex, I wouldn't be here if he didn't cheat on me. You know, I wouldn't have that power or that energy to do a podcast because I I never had to go through something that really changed me, that made me grow. So those are the things that I am very thankful for that happened. Maybe worse, maybe something that hurt me so much, but I grew up from it, and we all do. So let's talk about the benefits of practicing gratitude okay so first is gratitude open the door opens the door to more relationships not only does saying thank you constitute good manners but showing appreciation can help you win new friends so when you say thank you to people when you kind you appreciate what people provide you you build this rapport this relationship with them that you acknowledge them you acknowledge their presence so the more that you are grateful for the people around you the more that they would feel that you are genuine when you make connections with them these are genuine things and if you want to make friends and if you really just want to connect to people gratitude showing showing gratitude helps a lot in building that rapport so be grateful for the people that support you. I am grateful for all my podcast listeners. I'm grateful for the people who see my journey and say, oh, that was great. I'm grateful for the people who watch my stories, who enjoys my roller skating videos. I am grateful for all those. And I've I've sent them. I've, I was filled with so much appreciation the past few days and I've wanted to connect with them all the time. And I appreciate every little message, every little response and reply that they do for me. And it just makes me feel good. It fills me up more. So the more that I give it, the more that I also feel good, if that's what it, you know. This the, this reminds me of a book called You Can Never Run Out of Love. It's my favorite storybook that I tell to my kids as a preschool teacher. And there was, um, well, there was a line in that book is that whenever you give some, you'll always have more. So love and gratitude is almost the same thing, that when you give it more, you feel more fulfilled. So also gratitude improves physical health. Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains and they report feeling healthier than the other people. I guess because this is part of your mental health, you know, health and overall. Gratitude improves physical health because you don't really take into your heart the things that you don't want to keep anymore. Because the more that you keep these emotions, the more that you try to hold on to angers and grudges and all that, you, you ache. Physically, because sometimes mental pain translates to physical pain. I've felt that. If you have been heartbroken, this does translate to physical pain. It may not be as 
searing as other pain, but this pain feels heavy. This pain feels really just demotivating. This pain makes you feel like you just want to lay down in bed and it just hurts. And you can't pinpoint what hurts for you. So that's how it works on the side of improving physical health. Gratitude also improves psychological health. So, you know, gratitude tries and gets to reduce a multitude of toxic emotions ranging for envy, resentment, to frustration, and regret. So this also brings us to that idea of um, psychological health. It allows us to have this clear mind and happier perspective of a lot of things. It does reduce that toxic emotion of envy, resentment, and try to compare yourself to others because you are thankful for what you have. You're thankful for the opportunities that arise for you. And with that, you you lessen that idea of you're not good enough. You know, with that psychological health, when you're grateful for the things you have, when you are grateful for the things that you do, the little wins that you have, the little things that come your way, you see more of it. You see more of the beauty that is in red is in front of you, and you see the cup half full rather than half empty. Because, you know, if you are grateful and you try to write it down in a notebook, you might see that these things that you experience, that you have, the little wins, the little things that you should be thankful for, are little steps, are little pieces and blocks to your dream, to that whole picture and that whole wallpaper and painting that you've been trying to make as a masterpiece for your life. And also it enhances empathy and reduces aggression. Grateful people are more likely to behave in a pro-social manner, even when others behave less kind. You will have this clarity. Gratitude also brings that kind of clarity that you are, you know, you are secure with where you are. You are happy with where you are. You are grateful. You're thankful for standing on your own two feet and finding that ground where you're happy and your inner peace is there. And it enhances your empathy. It makes you feel for, for people who who does you wrong, who who really just doesn't see or who seems to be lost and you're just there and you want to feel for them. You feel for them. You want to help them out. But you act in a more compassionate, understanding way that maybe these people are going through something. So if you practice this, you gain this level of empathy that you would need to feel what is happening in the universe. And if you feel that, you would also know how lucky we are most of the time that we get what we want whenever we want it. And it just produces this idea that, well, we should help the world to be kinder to each other you know, people around you. Grateful people sleep better. So writing in a gratitude journal, journal, journal <laughs> improves sleep. So writing in a gratitude journal improves sleep. The um, research tells us that people who write it down and that they're thankful for all the things, they tend to sleep happier. They tend to sleep um, in peace. And I would like to say that because I try to do that each and every day. Um, I write it down. I write down the things that I'm proud of and I write down the things that I'm not proud of today. And most of the time, I feel really, really good that I actually notice the good things that happened to the day and I feel good. So it really just helps me sleep. I honestly feel like this works very, very much for me because as a person, I, I'd like to see the good things, you know. I'd like to see the good. I know that there's a bad, or, you know, I, I know that there's that tipping scale of bad things happening to a lot of people. But with this kind of thing, with this kind of practice, I still get to see the bad things that I do. I still get to see the worst qualities of me, the things that, you know, the things that are not in my control. But at least I get to think the things that happen to me and know that they're also not in my control, but it happened for me. So, you know, there, there are things that we could be grateful for each and every day. Gratitude improves self-esteem. A 2014 study published in the Journal of Applied Sports Psychology found that gratitude increased athletes' self-esteem, which is an essential component to optimal performance. So other studies also have shown that gratitude reduces social comparisons. So self-esteem. So well, the reason why it happens for us is because we see that we have wins. We, when, we, when we say thank you to what we have, when we say thank you for the little wins and acknowledge it, that it, it happens in our daily lives, we get to understand that these positive things that happen in our lives are really good 
And it doesn't need to be compared to other people. It just means that these kinds of things build our self-confidence and self-esteem as well. Because if you had a goal in mind and you see these things written down in your notebook, written down in a journal that, okay, last time you were asking and manifesting to be a host. And then after a few months, you realize, oh, wow, thank you, universe, for making me a host on this show. And you'd see that there was that literally jump from wishing to be where you were to stay actually being where you are today. You know, that that's um that's the most beautiful thing about journaling for me. I've been reading, I've been doing that once in a while. So I've had to journal. I had I actually started my journal since 2019 and that was the first year that I was able to finish one and I'm almost about to finish the other one this year. And when you try to look back at least a few months before, a month ago or whatever, you would realize how the transition of the growth of your mind comes from that year and the lessons that you've learned to the latter parts of the year. For example, this year, I wrote something about um, having love for February, you know, that I am not alone, that I was surrounded by the people that love me and I am very grateful for that. And up until now, I still feel that way. When I looked into that, I was just happy. It filled me up with gratefulness and happiness and love again because, oh, I still have that up until today. You know, even if I was going through something right now, even mentally, I know most of us are drained right now. But when I saw that, I, the, that feeling of youth, that feel, warm, tingly feeling of youth, gratefulness, and love came washing over me. So writing those down, it also made me feel very confident in myself that I still have those. And I feel great about myself. I feel happy about myself. So gratitude does improve self-esteem. Next is gratitude increases mental strength. For years, research has shown gratitude not only reduce stress, but it also may play or may play a major role in overcoming trauma. So there are things that happen to us. Again, those are pivotal moments, I told you. And we went back through that, through all the things that made a big ripple of effects and change in your life. These can cause trauma. These can cause a lot of stress in your mental health. But when you practice gratitude also, it really just provides you that exercise. It's a mental exercise of being grateful for what happened it increases your mental strength. It makes you resilient to situations like these. It makes you resilient to a lot of stressful situations that's not in your control because that's what people are going to tell you. You know, The only thing that's constant is change. Change is inevitable. Trust the process. There are things that you can't control and you have to control what you can control. It's always going to be in that essence that we don't really control everything. But you know what? This has been great at increasing my mental strength. To be honest, being grateful when I get the chance to. I love being grateful, actually. I love saying thank you to people. Whenever I do that, I I really try to make them feel that I do appreciate them because I do. And one of the words that I used this year, I learned to use, is I appreciate you. And mind you, this word appreciate you goes a long way. These people really feel good about it. I really feel good when I give it that give that word due. Um I would say, hey, I appreciate you a lot. I appreciate your presence. I appreciate your um input on this one. They really feel it. And I love that word because it's you know, I had that I, I taught I was able to talk to someone before and it was also a little, you know, it it was a little loving. Loving char no. It's a little it's a little more endearing, that conversation or those conversations I've had with this person. And whenever we stop talking or whenever we had to go and stop talking to each other, you'd always say, I appreciate you and I want you to know that. And it's also relieving of the pressure of loving someone as of the moment. It doesn't mean that you don't love them. It's just you were able to appreciate their presence. You were able to appreciate how they helped you through this certain situation. And, and it's really good. That, that word appreciate. Um, and the way I do it, the way I actually try to make 
make them feel appreciated is whenever I get my coffee. I remember whenever I get my coffee from Tim Hortons, I'd be like, hey, good morning. How is your day? I hope you're having a great morning. And the, the cashier would be happy and like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, so I just want to get my coffee, iced latte, and whatsoever. And I say, thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Have a, have a great day. And sometimes we even get their names. You know, I try to make friends. And it's really fun. It's really just so nice to spread that love and light to a lot of people. Even in roller skating, you know, um, the community that I've, I've been in for roller skating has been so supportive. And I can't just thank them enough. And I felt so compelled to actually... Um, say thank you to the whole community, I had to write this story of thanking all of them. And a lot of them just really replied and reacted to that story and they said thank you too. And I, somebody told me that you are love and light. And I was like, thank you. And I, I couldn't express it. I just, I feel like I am a broken record saying thank you, I'm grateful for you all the time. And I appreciate this, I appreciate that. I feel like a broken record, but it just feels so good saying that. And it doesn't lose its meaning for me because I really feel that gratefulness pounding my heart. <laughs> so with all that, I let's get down to a break and we'll see you again later. So see ya. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. All right, back to the show. So I also want to tell you a story, a little story. So I actually try to live my life as much as I live it inside my head. I try to live it out loud how I live it in my life. So one of the things that I was going through while I was teaching my kids. So I, I'm a teacher again. That's one thing. If you haven't listened to my past episodes, I'm a preschool teacher. And whenever I teach my kids... Um, I really teach them the value that I know and the value that I want them to grow up in. For example, that, you know, it's okay that if you don't know the answer, just try it out because that's the only way that I know I could help you. So if you don't know it, just let me know. So don't be shy. Don't be afraid to make, get the, ro- the wrong answers or the right answers. Don't, don't hesitate. Just try. Because if you do try, we would know that you wouldn't know what to do. And there I could help you. So I've been teaching them that. I've been teaching them that gender doesn't have any, or colors doesn't have any genders, occupations, and things like that. Um, And it's quite wonderful for me because I get to have this impact in the world, you know. Growing up, at least one kid, one other kid knows that it, you know, grades aren't the only thing that are important, but it's also them, their well-being, their everything. And I do care for my kids. So... There's this one time that I was searching through read aloud books in YouTube. So you can do that if you have kids. You can do read aloud storybooks. So it's not all the time animations. It's really a flip by flip page and somebody narrating the whole story. So read aloud storybooks. And I came across this story called the Tank- the Thankful Spot Story. And we were a- I was able to tell that story to my kid and listen to it, watch it together. Is that I asked. They were. I was asking them what was the spot thankful for, and the spot just enumerated a lot of lists of things to be thankful for. And the reason being that the spot did that was, you know, because it, it's something that makes him happy, and so the story just went on as is the spot think everything from the little things. The spot think the family. The spot think having a roof over their head. The spot think like the little things, the chocolates that he had in the morning, the pancakes that he would eat during dinner. He was really just grateful for all those. And I asked my kids, so what are you thankful for? And some of them answered, I'm thankful for my mom who helped me. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for my food. I'm thankful for that. And you would see it in the voice or hear it in the voices of my child's parents that they were happy to hear that as well. And, and, and we rarely do that. We rarely show appreciation for people around us. Sometimes I know people don't ask for it. People don't really want it and be cheesy about it. But when you have the chance to provide this kind of appreciation, this also normalizing or normalizes showing appreciation to people around you. And why is that good? It's good because you foster this spirit of care, communal care and love around your society. So... 
practice it. Practice writing down. Now is the time to do something. So if you've learned in this podcast, you've learned something during this episode. You've learned the benefits of showing gratitude towards around, or towards the people around you. Why don't you start today? Just easy as pie. At the end of the day, why don't you write five things that you're thankful for? And in the morning, I'd like you to write five things that you would thank the universe for. That is manifesting. So let's practice those. And in the morning, we write the things that we're thankful for, but some of the things that we still don't have. So one of the secrets of manifesting is saying thank you to the universe or thank you God or whoever do you believe in. You say thank you that you have this already and feel like you already have it. So that's how you try to manifest things. Try it. Do your journey of manifestation, just five things, and visualize how it feels for you when you have those things. I'm sure you're going to attract the same energy, same opportunities that will get you where you want to be. I've attracted that so many times. I've done that law of attraction and manifestation. And I could deal with that in more of our episodes, but that's the first, like, that's the first, um, what do you call that? That's the first technique that I could teach you about being grateful and visualizing that you already have it with you when it comes to those things that you want to have. So that's in the morning and in the evening. I want you to be thankful for the things that has happened to you within the day. And if you try that, you would see that there were so many things. You know, it would be more than five things you would actually be grateful for. And if you keep writing those and you keep recording those, you can go back to them once a month, once every other month, or you know, to see how far you've come and the progress that you've had and the things that you were thankful for. Because some of them may be the things that you were manifesting and some of them that, you know, are all the things that you already had because even before you manifested it. So it's really, really just, it's an eye-opening. It gives you that sense of presence and self-awareness of the things that's going on around you. It encourages metacognition or thinking about how you think. Okay, so with all that, loveys, this has been a very heartfelt episode. It was calm, it was fun, it was great. And if you've learned something in this podcast and you want to share it to other people, don't forget to click subscribe in our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and so many more. And share this out with your friends, share it in the stories, tag me at Eduardo Lim on Instagram if you want to, and join us on Facebook for love, growth, and freedom for more tips and more ideas and more visuals and graphics that you could see about love, growth, and freedom. And again, lovies, we'll see you on our next episode, practicing gratitude and learning how to do it in a deeper, more sense. So see you and goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or via RSS. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, Rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to know more, check out www.guerillapodcast.com.au or guerillapodcast.com.ph. A Guerilla Podcast Syndicate Production.